Welcome to the Reasonable Faith Podcast with William Lane Craig. Probably once a day, we get a question on the the KCA. That's not a fried chicken place. Uh, We're talking about the Kalam Cosmological Argument. This is Dr. Craig. In Hilbert's Hotel, the absurdities only arise when you try and move the guests around. However, when it comes to the temporal events of the past, the events are set, and it is impossible to move them around. This implies that the kind of absurdities that Hilbert's Hotel experiences aren't relevant to an actually infinite amount of past events. You responded to this in one of your podcasts by saying that even the imaginability of moving temporal events around brings out the absurdities that we get in Hilbert's Hotel. However, the point you were illustrating in Hilbert's Hotel is that the actual infinite is, in actuality, absurd. If the absurdities can only occur in your mind, how does this show that there cannot be an actually infinite past in actuality? Okay. I thought that was an interesting question. In that, Yes. Uh, I frankly don't see the force of this objection. It seems to me that you don't need to actually move the guests around in order to see, for example, that all of the odd-numbered guests are equal to all of the odd-numbered guests plus the even-numbered guests, or that if all of the odd-numbered guests were to check out, there would still be an infinite number of even-numbered guests left in the hotel. They don't actually have to check out in order for you to see that. And on the other hand, if all of the guests in rooms greater than three were to check out, then there would only be three people left in the hotel. And this illustrates the sort of absurdities and, in the end, I think, self-contradictions that result from the existence of an actually infinite number of things. But there's nothing about the argument that requires that the people actually have to get up and, and move. You're, you're illustrating here quantitative comparisons yeah, uh, that can uh, simply be done in your head. Okay. What does moving them around show? Moving guests in room one into room three and then eva- evacuating all the odd number of guests. Doing those movements What does that show? Well, in the first case, it would show that you can have a hotel which is fully occupied, in which there is literally no vacant room. Every room in the hotel has a flesh and blood person in it, and yet that hotel could accommodate infinitely more people. Mm -hmm. That's what it would show. But it doesn't seem to me that you actually have to carry it out in order to see that that would be the case. So this would hold even if the people in the hotel rooms never moved? Right. In fact, you could do it with, say, doorways instead of people. Uh, Imagine something that doesn't move. Uh, Just imagine, say, the doorway or something. It's irrelevant that it actually has to be physically transported about. So it seems to me that the fact that events in the past don't physically or can't be physically moved about is just irrelevant to seeing the relationships quantitatively between, say, the odd-numbered events and the even-numbered events, or the events greater than three compared to all of the odd-numbered events in the past. What of the all-ordered room service? That's kept me up at night. Anyway, thank you for the question there. Very quick question, Dr. Craig. This writer